Hi, I'm a rice farmer. Any other rice farmers out there? Please raise your hands. I work with them. Um, so let me tell you some, uh, the rest of you something about being a rice farmer. It's really hard work. You have to wake up at 6 in the morning, go out in the field, whether it be sun or rain, and work on your field until the sun goes down. And my biggest dream as a rice farmer is to get great, great yield by the end of the season and sell everything at a really good price, and then all my hard work will be paid off. But one of my worst nightmares is that before the end of the season comes, all my precious plants will be eaten away by insects. To address the issue of insect pests, the obvious choice is to use pesticides, right? But a recent study from the FAO has caught my attention. It surveyed 100 Chinese rice farmers and found out that 23% of them suffer from either liver or kidney damage. 23%. And I thought, that's not cool, because I love my liver and my kidneys. So I raised this question. How can I control the pests on my field with just the minimum use of pesticides? And I also thought, whatever I find out may be useful to other farmers too. Now, throughout human history, we became really good at manipulating part of the land so that we can produce concentrated amount of food. But unfortunately, insect pests also share our appetite. And for as long as agriculture has, has existed, we've been at war with these insects. In the spring of each year, in the beginning of the planting season, we can get a head start by doing a few things. First, we can pick rice varieties that are more resistant to a certain pests. Also, we have to be careful not to use too much nitrogen fertilizers because pests love nitrogen-rich plants. Also, we can plant our rice at a greater distance so that pests have no spaces to hide. Also, just increasing the flow of air and water through our plants can really help. But even if we do everything right, we can still have an outbreak of pests. And this is when we have to face them off in the battleground. And Sun Tzu has said in The Art of War, know yourself and know your enemy, and you can fight 100 battles without defeat, right? So let's get to meet our enemies. There are three insect pests that are really problematic in my village. Public enemy number one is the plant hopper. Plant hoppers are really tiny, aphid-like insects, and they feed by sucking the fluids out of rice. And they multiply really fast, and they can fly long distances. So what we can find is a huge group of hoppers coming in to one patch of rice, do serious damage, and then they just fly away before we can even get around to it. Public enemy number two, is the leaf folder. The leaf folder is a small moth in its adult stage. And in the larval stage, it feeds off rice. And the leaf folder has evolved this ability to fold the rice leaf and hide inside. And this is really hard for the, rice, uh, for the pesticide to get into. Public enemy number three, my most hated one, is the stem borer. The stem borer is also a moth that feeds on rice on the larval stage. And the stem borer, after it hatches, it climbs down to the base of the plant, bore a hole, and go inside. And it hides and feeds inside the stem for the rest of its larval stage. And when I discover it, it's usually a completely damaged till. And I was getting to this awkward moment with these stem borers when I pick up a damaged till, look at it, and it's staring at me right in the face. <clears throat> so that's what I do every time. And um, any one of these pests can cause a 20 to 100% reduction in yield. And that's not acceptable, right? So I thought, okay, this year is me versus them. And I thought, since I've claimed war on these insects, some well-tested war strategy might really help. And you've guessed it. 
the 36 stratagems. The 36 stratagems is an ancient Chinese war text and has a collection of 36 proverbs, each referring to a battle or a folklore from the Three Kingdoms or the Warring States period. And this is really, really old and it's ultimate textbook on war strategy. It's written by a general named Tan Daoji sometime around 400 AD. The earliest artifact we've discovered on the 36 stratagems is a Sui Dynasty jade scroll. It looks like that. And 36 stratagems, that's a lot of strategies, right? So today I'm gonna share six of my favorite. The first one is stratagem number three, to kill with a borrowed sword. And it tells us that if we want to damage our enemy, we can get a third party involved to do the deed. It turns out Chinese farmers have been doing this for centuries. The third party. So um, we can release ducks into the rice field because ducks eat everything. They eat all the insects and keep their numbers down. When the rice is small, we can introduce ducklings and the ducks and the rice will grow up together and the duck can spend the rest of its life happily foraging in the, in the rice paddy. Um, and of course, you can also eat the ducks. And, um, <laughs> and scientific study has shown that introducing ducks in a rice paddy can reduce the number of hoppers, borers, and folders by 30%, 23%, and 18% respectively. So this really works. But you might think that it's not super effective. And this is because it's hard for the duck to get into the insects that are hiding inside the rice plant. So here, we can borrow a smaller sword. The trichogrammatid. The trichogrammatid is a small, it's a family of small parasitic wasps. They're really tiny. They're among the smallest insects on Earth. And what they do is that they lay their eggs inside the eggs of larger insects. For example, our leaf folders and our stem borers. And when the baby wasps hatch, the host eggs die. And this is a way to keep our number of pests down. And these wasps, they are available in this very cheap, commercial packets, and this is me installing one when I predicted that a large number of eggs might be laid. And there are many studies have shown the effectiveness of releasing this natural enemy. Some studies say that 60% reduction of stem borer and 80% reduction of the leaf folder can be seen when we introduce the wasp. And this is amazing, right? Because this is comparable to using pesticides. My liver feels better already. And the next stratagem is a very popular one. Number 15, lure the tiger away from the mountain. And here the tiger being our enemy, and the mountain being our point of weakness or the enemy's point of strength. This grass is called the vetiver. And we can grow the vetiver around the ridges of our rice paddy to lure stem borers off of rice, and this is because stem borers, they prefer to lay their eggs on the vetiver, and they can do some damage to the vetiver, but they can't go through the entire life cycle because they would die off before it becomes adult. And the study has shown that if we grow the vetiver around the entire rice paddy, or just on one row on each side, we can reduce the number of stem borers in the rice paddy by 50 to 70 percent. And, and the vetiver is a perennial grass, which means it lives year after year. I only have to do this once. Perfect, right? The next one is also one of my favorites because it has this element of deceit. Stratagem number 10, to hide a knife behind a smile. So this means what we can do is we give our enemy something it likes, and when it's off its guard, we move in for the kill. This turns out to be actually a pretty old strategy. Um, so I've said earlier that insect pests really like nitrogen-rich plants, and we have to be careful to control the nitrogen 
level, not too high. But what we can do is we pick a small portion of a rice paddy and just fertilize the beep out of it. So here you can see that closer to me, closer to us, there's a patch of rice that's really, really green and really tall, and that's my trapping plot. Here I've applied a lot of nitrogen fertilizer. And this trapping plot is able to attract a lot of pests, and this allows me to manage a small area instead of a huge one. So if I were to combine this with using pesticides, I'm only using a tiny portion of the pesticides. And in this very early study, it said that if we set up a trapping plot that's only 5% of the total area, this area can attract up to 50% of the total pest egg mass. And this is really cost effective. I can use 5% of pesticides to get rid of 50% of the pests, right? And no war is complete without the beauty trap. I'm not talking about myself. Uh, so number 31, the beauty trap. We can get these commercially available sex pheromone sticky traps and install them in the rice field. So um, there are two parts on this device. On the top part, there's a chemical that mimics the sex pheromones of female stem borers. And the male stem borers are naturally attracted to it. And then it gets stuck on the sticky trap. It's a really, really simple idea. And it can reduce stem borer damage by 44 to 71%. And if you guessed it, yes, you can use many of these stratagems in combination, sort of like a combo move. And in fact, using them in tandem is a stratagem in itself. Number 35, chain stratagems. So here is us installing a light trap on the trapping plot where there's a lot of uh, nitrogen. And this gives us an additional 10 to 20% of kill. Also, you can imagine that you can grow your vetiver around your rice paddy, and then you can install your um, wasps in the same paddy, right? So we can mix and match. Uh, the last strategy, the most famous one, is number 36. If all else fails, retreat. Now, this is so famous that there's a Chinese idiom that goes, of the 36 stratagems, fleeing is best. Now, why is retreating or fleeing the best stratagem? Well, it turns out that if we plant rice on the same, pot of, same plot year after year, we really do get a buildup of rice-loving pests. And what we can do is we can break that cycle by skipping a year. But we don't just leave, we just we plant something else that's not rice-related. So we can rotate another crop in. So this used to be a uh, rice paddy last year, and this year we've decided to turn it into a peanut plot. And because a lot of the pests are rice-specific, or they just eat rice, if we introduce one cycle of something else, their numbers can be greatly reduced in the next season. This is especially effective for plant hoppers and stem borers. So here we go. Those were the stratagems that I thought I would share with you. But here's the story. I didn't come up with any of those um, pest managing strategies, right? But I did find that using the 36 stratagems as a communicational tool really effective. And this was the story. So uh, about a couple months ago, I was standing in my paddy and I was trying to install my newly bought sex pheromone sticky trap when a, a villager walked by and he asked me what I was doing. And I said, look, I'm trying to install my new sex pheromone sticky trap. And he said, sex what? And, and I said, oh, um, so, so it's got it's chemicals and it, no, 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 it, it, it pretends to be female stem borers, and then the males will come, and then they get stuck. And he said, oh, you just told me that it's a beauty trap. And I said, oh, right. <laughs> I should just said that. Um, and a couple of weeks after, he saw me again in the field, and he was like, hey, how's your beauty trap going? Did I catch anything? 
So this is when I realized that using folklore or ideas or stories that these farmers are familiar with are really effective communicational tools for us to get these new technologies across. Um, so I went back with my colleagues. We went through our database of pest managing strategies, and we made connections with the 36 stratagems. And the reason why I think this is really important is because Chinese farmers, they're overwhelmingly elderly, and they don't have a systemic background in science. And using these familiar ideas for us to communicate, we can, we can let them know about these technologies and the mechanisms behind them without getting into too much scientific jargon. We took this farmer-centered approach, and we used them in the field, and we used them in training. And if we found them really effective because they're easy, they can easily remember them. Um, about 10 years ago, when I was a biology student at the University of Toronto, I was really concerned with how scientific knowledge can move beyond academia and into the real world. And now I realize that for something like farming, agriculture, where a huge number of rural community members are involved, we're not just facing a technical challenge, we're also facing a communicational one. And this is why I challenge scientists and businesses and whomever else is involved in agriculture to join me in taking this farmer-centered approach. And together, we can make this last-mile delivery of new technologies and new knowledge to those who need them the most. So please join Team Farmer. Thank you. Um, 首先我还没有成为科学家我只是科学的学生一些偶然的原因输送给他们 嗯, 谢谢, 谢谢, 谢谢。谢谢。